It's a lady in London here. Today I'm coming to you from St Albans, which is a city just north of London. It makes a great day trip from the UK capital, and it was one of the most important cities in historic Roman Britain. In fact, I'm standing in front of a piece of ancient Roman wall right now. There's a lot to see and do in the city, including a famous cathedral and a market, and there's lots more besides. I can't wait to show you around. It's easy to get to St Albans from London. In fact, it's one of the easiest day trips to do because it's so close. It's only 20 minutes from some London train stations. Once you're in the city, the markets are a great place to start. The St Albans traditional street market has been going strong since the 9th century, and it runs every Wednesday and Saturday. It takes over a lot of the big streets in the city, and it's a great place to start. There are other markets in the city too, including a farmer's market that runs on the second Sunday of each month. St Albans Cathedral is one of the most impressive buildings in the city. It dates way back. Norman masons used recycled Roman bricks to build the church, and later medieval builders added elegant pointed arches and stonework. It's an amazing work of architecture. St Albans Cathedral is also home to the largest and oldest cathedral tower in England. It was completed in 1088. The cathedral's medieval wall paintings are some of the finest and best preserved in Britain. They date from the early 13th to the 16th century, and they're stunning to see. The shrine of St. Alban himself was the reason for the foundation of the church and abbey and the town that grew up around it. Cathedrals aren't all St. Albans is known for though. It's home to one of the oldest pubs in England too. The Yield Fighting Cox is reputed to have accommodated Oliver Cromwell for a night during the English Civil War. St Albans is full of impressive Roman history, from ancient Roman walls to amphitheaters and more. You can see the ruins dotted throughout the city. It's worth popping over to Verulamium Park to see the Roman mosaic floor and the Roman walls. While St Albans Cathedral is the main event when it comes to churches, there are some other important ones as well. St Michael's dates back to before the Norman Conquest, and inside you can see brick arches that outline where some of the original 10th century windows would have been. 
outside you can see where recycled Roman bricks were used in its construction. Elsewhere, St. Peter's is another important historic church. It's believed to have been founded in 948, and it welcomed pilgrims who were coming to visit the Shrine of St. Albans in St. Albans Abbey. There are great museums too, from the Verulamium Museum with its Roman ruins to the St. Albans Museum and Gallery. There's a lot to choose from. St. Albans has some great green spaces, including the historic Verulamium Park. It's set in over a hundred acres of parkland and is known for its heritage, wildlife, and river Ver. Not far from the park, the Gorhambury Estate is home to the Roman Theatre and has walking and cycling paths. There are some great landmarks in St Albans too. One of them is the Clock Tower. It's the only surviving medieval town belfry in England, and it's designated as a scheduled ancient monument. It was constructed between 1403 and 1412, and it's stunning to see. Not far from there, the Abbey Gateway was built in 1365. It's the last remaining building of the Benedictine Monastery. St. Albans is home to some beautiful streets too, from side streets with red phone boxes to high streets with shops and restaurants. There's a lot to take in here. The historic houses are beautiful too. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of St. Albans and I hope you get a chance to visit yourself someday. As always, there's more on my blog, aladyinlondon.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel before you go. Happy travels. <laughs>